When we had last left, Harry, he and his partner Kim Kitsuragi had decided to wind down the day and debrief on all of their adventures that they had and progress that they had made on solving the case of the hanged man in the back of the whirling in rags. Unfortunately, very little progress was made, but a lot of progress was made in pretty much everything else. Afterwards, they both retired to their rooms, where Harry laid down for a restful slumber, but was not met with rest at all, and instead was met with a horrific nightmare, one in which he was once again in the back of the whirling in rags, facing down that hanged man. But instead of that same man, it was himself, and he had to come to terms with some of the horrific shit that he had done to himself. And now, a new day had dawned, and it was time to try to pull that body down. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Ooh, very grim. <laughs> Let's see, is there anything new I can do? Look at myself in this. Let's see. Nope, nothing. All right. I am. We should probably check in on everyone, because I'm very curious if... um. We'll have any, like, new sort of fun update or whatever, right? Like, people will have new dialogue. Let's see here. I can't surprise Kim by, like, busting that shit down. Can I interact with the fan here? Anything? Nope. Nothing. Leave. All right. Let's head on out. Do you think he's already down here? Kim Kitsuragi seems like the kind of man who will already be down here, like, eating breakfast or something. Or finishing breakfast, even. Okay. Anything else around here? No, looks about the same. Can we have a knock on his door? No. Can we have a knock on this person's door? I don't even remember your name. Huh. Knock again, much harder. Still nothing. Half light, medium success. You should punch a fucking hole in it. <laughs> oh god. Fucking whore?! Punch the door. Suppress the urge. Suppress the urge. The murmur in your ears recedes slowly. Your breathing normalizes. It's one lucky door. Leave. Good God. We're a fucking disaster still. Let's get down here. Low on morale? Put some points into volition. <laughs> Thanks. Great. But we are fully restored. Oh, shit. A lot has changed. Look at this. Wow. Oh, look, and Lena has moved as well. Oh, shit. Let's get the rundown, huh? Should we check in with Kim first? Oh, he's already come over here. Okay. Do you think... Here's a question. Do you think he heard us at night? Do you think we were, like, talking or, like, screaming in our sleep as we were, like, having that horrific nightmare? Let's see. Morning. He gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union muscle turned up. He points to the mess hall doors. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. Why do we need to talk to them? What do you mean, rowdy? Are these the men Gart told us about yesterday? What do you mean, rowdy? I mean, ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the union, these men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast? There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys? Like the books? Who are responsible for said policing. I think it's them. Though I think the books were spelled with a Y, right? Good God. Let's see. Why do we need to talk to them? A lot of things point to the Dock Workers' Union. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Hmm, actually. That's not a lot of things. We should have dug up more yesterday. Still, we need to talk to them. And it won't be easy. Are these the men Gart told us about yesterday? I wonder if we can... Like, if, could we have actually legitimately performed better yesterday? I wonder. Are these the men Gart told us about? I completely forgot. He looks at his notes. 
Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them. By the looks of it. Loud and nasty. Just like the manager said. Ooh. Task complete. Find out who is in the union box. Gained XP 30. Huh. What was that even? Let's see. Find who is in the union box? Does it mean that box over there? Hmm. Alright. Weird. Sure. He crosses something out. One loose thread less to worry about, and one big problem to replace it. There are so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Half-Light, medium success. He's not exaggerating about that mortal danger. Just calmly factoring it in. Your fists clench, and your pulse rises uncomfortably. Let's roll. One more thing before we do. He glances at the booth again. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Authority, easy success. Good, a power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Yeah, maybe we should try and pull down the fucking body first. Because <laughs> I'm sure they'll give us some sort of guff for not having done that. But we should probably also speak with Gart and Lena and Kitchen Man, right? Let's see, Gart, anything new? Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. About my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? No, I don't. Not yet. He rolls his eyes. Then why are you wasting my time and yours? Goodbye. Lena, anything new? Just a moment. Oh. The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. And there's no public phones nearby. The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, Mum. The cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine. I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. She turns back to you with a weary smile. What is she? Does she need to call, like, her husband? The cryptozoologist? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe she can use our shortwave, or Kim's, I guess. Continue. Suggestion. Medium success. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Okay, this is definitely intentional. Last time, I wasn't sure if this was intentional or not. This is definitely intentional. Howdy, Lena, what's kicking? Good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your conversation. Tell me how I might make it up to you? You seem busy. I'll come back later. Now, let's say everything all right. Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. Hmm. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. She sighs. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? Why did you need to use the phone anyway? You know, I just noticed because she's now this angle. Her chair is motorized, and also it has a, like, oxygen tank on the back. Huh. Okay, wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. She frowns. Why did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who is house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel... My husband and Gary were supposed to be back on Monday night, but they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. Hmm. This seems important, right? Why would they just name drop these people like this out of nowhere? Okay. We don't know a Morel or a Gary, do we? I don't think so. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. 
Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? This sounds like more of a... This sounds more like a side thing. I need to take care of my main thing. Then I'll get back to this. Fuck it, let's get more side quests, right? Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. Shivers. Medium success. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it. Somnolent. I've never seen that word in my life. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling in rags. But you have more important things to worry about. She glances out the window toward the bay. What is this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He, he and his assistant, Gary, are studying an extremely rare species of insect. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast, across the waterlock, to set a few traps. Oh, because the waterlock is shut tight, right? Because of the billboard in the way. But why doesn't the phone work? Hmm. We know why they can't get back, but we don't know why the phone isn't working. Huh. He said they'd be back on Monday. She sighs. What could be keeping them? Logic, trivial success. The water lock, that was broken. Could this be it? Wait, who's this Gary person? Do you trust him? She smiles. Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. Huh. Is Gary like a dog? The water, the water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Right, but it still doesn't explain the phone situation, right? That's pretty weird, but probably... Potentially unrelated, right? Potentially totally unrelated to their problem. And maybe the phone situation is related to a different problem. Alright. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my! What happened to the water lock? Wouldn't you know, it's blocked by a big butter billboard. It fell right into the water. Probably some technical problem. I really don't know. It's a big butter billboard. Oh, sweetie. If it weren't for you, I'd be looking forward to another sleepless night. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome, ma'am. She turns back to you. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. Inland Empire medium success. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here. When or if I get there. Accept task. I've really spent too much time on this side case as it is. Reject. Now let's accept it. New task. Find Morel, the cryptozoologist. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. So your husband is some kind of scientist? Oh, yes. She says with a pinch of pride. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. What is cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. The lieutenant sounds unimpressed. That's one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology. One specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Searching for such species, called cryptids, is difficult and often thankless, and frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. 
Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Empathy, medium success. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Huh. Tell me more about morale. Looks, character, your relationship. Oh dear, I'm not sure where to begin. What does your husband look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's, and his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. Empathy medium success. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Is that true? Huh. I th that's a that tracks about right. Yeah, I think that... At least for me, that sounds about right. Alright. Let's try again. If I were trying to meet him on this street, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds. You know, just in case. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Her smile is soft. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. How did the two of you meet? Via a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident, and he just divorced. We hit it off, and, well, here we are. She smiles wistfully. I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. And it does make sense that um, Kim is not keen on this right because earlier when we were trying to sell him on there being some big weird shit going on he wasn't having it <laughs> tell me more about the rare insect oh sweetie it's fascinating she catches herself but i shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae the lieutenant gives you a sideways glance ah, i want to hear about the insect you're right i don't have time for insect facts right now let's talk about something else I want to hear about the insect. Well, she hesitates. It's a phasmid, technically, but... Inland Empire, medium success. Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting. Aren't phasmids... No, I'm thinking of plasmids from Bioshock. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Is this like a real thing or is this like something in universe or whatever? I don't know. Like a real cryptid, a phasmid? Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here in the Insulindian coast. She looks you in the eye and nods thoughtfully. Hence its name, the Insulindian Phasmid. Perhaps he'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers. This is becoming very Twin Peaks, right? Like, we were already saying that Inland Empire seems like the Twin Peaks Agent Cooper stat right now this seems very like log leggy log leggy log lady shit going on half light medium success there's a touch of awe in the way she enunciated the creature's name i knew it the lieutenant sighs we're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists <laughs> it's not made up officer i can assure you it's simply elusive, so much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. What makes you think the phasmid is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. Electrochemistry, challenging success. Interesting. 
Maybe the phasmid made the teenagers make out. Oh, it's a fucking cryptid. It makes people horny. Maybe the phasmid made them make out? <laughs> we can say that to her? <laughs> so a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have? No, we have to say it to her. Maybe the phasmid made them make out. She laughs. I doubt it. It's not like teenagers need much encouragement in that regard. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have? Of course. Most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms. But their description matched the Insulindian phasmid perfectly. And they didn't even know what they were looking at. So... Is it dangerous? She chuckles to herself. Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. Does it have cool powers? Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. Her face lights up at the thought of it. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. Really? Okay, what's so special about this stick bug, then? Gosh, it'll be sad if there is no weird shit and he is just dead out there. Okay, what's so special about this stick bug, then? Oh dear, I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman's face flushes with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. Suggestion 4. Okay, high percentage chance, 83%. Oh, because she's less worried about her husband, we have an extra bonus. And because I have the green 8 pen? Huh. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids? <laughs> sure, tell me about cool cryptids. Shit, I play 76, I know a little bit about cryptids and shit. Fucking Mothman up in here and all that shit. Oh, success. Suggestion, medium success. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptids you've studied. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company, too. The lieutenant throws you one of his looks. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This won't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Cryptid extravaganza? I like the sound of that. <laughs> okay, Kim. Just one little cryptid. Promise. Oh, I like the sound of that. And I don't. Just one. Volition medium success. Or he'll be disappointed in you. Encyclopedia Easy Success. Ooh, tough choice there. <laughs> oh, fuck, look at all these. What's the biggest cryptid? What's the tiniest cryptid? What's the most dangerous cryptid? Is there a cryptid on this pen you gave me? Take out the pen she gave you. <laughs> Are there any invisible cryptids? This has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Hmm. Is that a cryptid on this pen you gave me? Take out the pen she gave you, the kind green ape. Oh, what? It is? Fuck off. <laughs> yes, it's the kind green ape. Half war story, half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. War story? Yes, it was reported by soldiers in South Safar during the war. The kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow, with its saliva? And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? With its saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. Really? Huh. Kind of fitting that we have it then, because we're so fucked up. Oh, man! 
And kind of fitting that she had it, especially being as she's paraplegic. Oh, man, that's really heartwarming. Wow. All right. That's amazing. Do you think her husband gave it to her or something? And that was like one of their initial gifts or whatever. Shit. And she gave it to me. Oh, man. Oh, she also said that that uh, didn't when she give it to us. She said, like, it, I feel like you need it more than I do right now or something like that. Holy shit. Just from that little incidental dialogue, have we found so much about what's going on here? That's fucking incredible. All right. And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family, same genus. Which is to say, the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor, and that evolve parallel to our own, just like your partners. I knew it, Kim. You're not human. I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is stupid. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Is she actually secretly a racist? Oh no, is this kind, sweet old lady a racist? Wouldn't be the first time it's happened to me! <laughs> Not even in this game, I'm talking about real life! <laughs> Alright. Ha, huh, that's why I always have to take the lead, right, Kim? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, what is she saying? Is she really a racist? Oh my god! Please, God, no, not again! <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kim is the same species as us. To suggest otherwise is stupid. The lieutenant looks at you pleasantly surprised. Oh, no, I didn't mean to imply that Solites are inferior to us. In many ways, she turns to the lieutenant. You are superior. For example, your earwax doesn't have a foul odor like ours does. What? This sounds like some weird racist shit. This sounds like some racist shit. This kind old lady is also a racist, I bet. A tremendous evolutionary advantage, I'm sure. But perhaps we've heard we've had enough speculative biology for today. Good lord. Do you think he knew that she was kind of a racist? And maybe that's why he didn't want to entertain her? Ooh, but also I want to know about the biggest cryptid. The lieutenant leans in. Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. But Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? Right, okay, we can move on for now. It'd be dishonorable to renege on the promise. We're going to push him. Don't you want to hear about another cryptid? The lieutenant pauses thoughtfully. Volition. Medium success. Something in him breaks. Ah, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> what is this fucking conversation? <laughs> she smiles. Well, the biggest cryptid is, of course, the horrible giant of Kokonur. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Yeah, it seems like... I'm still kind of stuck on that. It seems like she's not, like, the intentionally malicious form of racism that we encountered with the racist lorry driver who was just, like, a complete, like, I guess, in-world Occidental supremacist, it sounded like, from the likes of it. He just was really a piece of shit. She's like the kind of racism that is just ignorant, like well-meaning ignorance. If anything, uh, it reminds me of Adair and his relation with Orleans in Pillars of Eternity, right? Okay. Wait, what do you mean odd light? And just how big is it? Is it dangerous? Hmm. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur Desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. What do you mean about odd light? A mirage. Or a psychogenuous... genuous 
luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. What the fuck? What is it again? Some sort of giant? The giant? The horrible giant of Coco Noor. What? All right. Kim, you're selling me on this being bullshit. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of the Coco Noor is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a fata, fata morgana. Others, a fate unimaginable. Hooey, the lieutenant interjects. No animal can be that large. It's a mirage. Right, isn't that true? Something about, like... At least if this is an Earth-like planet, right? I think it's possible on planets with lower gravity or some shit like that. But isn't that some sort of, like, weird law of thermal dynamics where if, like, a living creature is too large, it would generate too much heat and die? It would kill itself by being too big? Something like that? Isn't that the case? Hmm. I think so? That could be... That could be off base. Don't quote me on that. But I think that might be a real ass thing. But like, hypothetically, theoretically, if it were on a planet with lower gravity, such a thing could exist at a larger size, I think? Continue. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Coco Noor must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Coco Noor desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Oh. Inland Empire medium success. <laughs> Great. This is great shit. You need more. All right, what is the tiniest cryptid? Cryobacter catalensis. Cat catalensis. She answers immediately. Cryobacter catalensis? Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Katla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Catalin Miano some 70 years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Miano found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate, certainly from before recorded history. Miano disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study, no doubt, in hopes of prolonging her own life. What? Because it remained alive for being frozen, she just decided to inject herself with it? Wait, she injected herself with it? Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. That is such a leap. It's actually a little hard to see. He looks at her skeptically. But do go on. <laughs> you mean, there's an immortal geologist wandering the world? <laughs> like, we just buy in that it worked. Yes, it worked. <laughs> I don't understand. Why would you prolong your life? Being alive is terrible. <laughs> I intend to live forever, too. As a symbol. <laughs> she was pretending, preparing for the end times. She wanted to witness and record the twilight proceedings. Immortal bacteria. Immortal geologists? That's too wild. Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> I'm down for either the depressing one or that we buy into and into believing that she is alive. <laughs> Still, that it worked. Hmm. You mean there is an immortal geologist wandering the world? Yes. And she's quite mad, too. 
After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible. Irrational? I don't know. So that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now, all alone, except for the Cryobacter Catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Jesus. What's the most dangerous cryptid? The Gnome of Jeroma. She pauses for effect. The Gnome of Jeroma? That sounds terrifying. The Gnome of Jeroma? That doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't sound too bad. Oh, it is. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies, because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What did this cryptid look like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead. An ungainly little thing, quite scary to look at. A small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> a weird frog? A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped... And they were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. She looks at you, her voice grave suddenly. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, the lieutenant can't help himself. Why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks confirming the existence of this very lethal species? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science, she says mostly to herself. <laughs> I think I think Kim is enjoying these in the way of, like, he kind of likes seeing, like, how, how fucking real or not this shit is. <laughs> All right. Are there any invisible cryptids? What an interesting question. And the answer is, yes, there are. <laughs> of course, all fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. You're right, Kim. It's childish, but I need to know. Shush, Kim. She's going to tell me about the invisible cryptid. What is it? Let's shush him. It's the Kol Domama Dakwa. The woman corrects her glasses. Its name means thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. The Kol Domama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. What does it uh, sound like? Could it be here? Look around. Right now? What evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Being a sound? Oh yeah. And that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves. Right, yeah, okay. I totally misunderstood that. I thought she, she said that it emanated it. Huh. Why is the Mama Dakwa so afraid of us? Interesting. What about... Now, let's say, could it be here now? It could be, she says calmly. As I said, it could be everywhere, and we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. Half-light, medium success. Maybe it's predatory. What if it's predatory? It's not. Don't worry. If it were predatory, we would have found it by the damage it inflicts. Half-Light. I wouldn't be so sure. What if the damage is also invisible? <laughs> what, what does it uh, sound like? Like nothing. It's such a high-pitched sound that us humans can't hear it. 
nor can other animals. It could be ringing right outside your window, and you wouldn't even know it. It could be anywhere, everywhere even. The lieutenant looks at her skeptically. Fine, I'll bite. How can an animal be a sound? <laughs> this is great! <laughs> Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscule that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. <laughs> and of course, he's too, he's too, like, nice to want to be like, <laughs> like, slam his foot down and be like, I don't think so. I think this is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, after all, he puts up with our dumbass all the time. What evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of aeropagite, aeropagite, <laughs> ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying, to, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Aya mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were, consist were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Mm-hmm, songbirds. Just odd and eagerly, or nod eagerly. Gosh, I can't even read. Just nod eagerly. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding mating, and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest-pitched bat calls. Suggestion medium success. She transforms when speaking about these strange animals into a confident woman. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Koldu Mamadakwa, after the Pericarnassian name for the voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Wow. Mm-hmm. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds, even though they couldn't see them. They could distinguish among individual birds, and, she smiles, even began to name some of them. Name them? Sequester, time, Yosquin, she nods. Those are but some of the Mama Dakwa they followed individually. Why is the Mama Dakwa so afraid of us? I mean, why wouldn't it be? That is a sad story, she frowns. A group of university students, assisting with the fieldwork in their enthusiasm for the project and, no doubt, because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. Extinction? She, she nods gravely. They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mama Dakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? Suggestion, medium success. This lady really should be a teacher. She's really good at explaining things thing. At the explaining things thing. They cancel each other out. They amplify each other. I don't know. <laughs> now let's, let's lean into us still being dumb. I don't know. Well, dear, they cancel each other out. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well... They wiped out most of the population. Oh, you know what? I should have told her that I did know that they do cancel each other out because maybe she would reward us for knowledge. Remember? Knowledge should always be rewarded. Maybe she would give us something. All right, continue. Empathy. Medium success. Great regret washes over her. A wending cloth. After that, the corpuscule appears to have migrated elsewhere. It's not corpuscule, though, is it? It's corpuscle. Appears to have migrated elsewhere. 
there may there have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kol Du Mama Dakwa population anywhere. Of course, a common thread in these disappearances and unfalsifiability, he concedes. I like the story, though, ma'am. I'm glad you did, dear. She seems genuinely glad. Interesting. What about... She smiles gently. What about what? Man, I just can't get enough of these cryptids. She grins. I'm glad you like them. But I'm not really one to tell you about all of them. You should ask my husband if you get the chance. He's the real expert. Oh, can we get even more? This is still lit up. I'd really like to hear more about cryptids. You know, to hell with it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Okay, that's the same shiz earlier. I can't get enough of them. That's all for now, ma'am. Wow. Holy shit. We spent like an hour of in-game time talking to her about fucking weird shit. <laughs> that's Disco Elysium! Let's see. What is our task here? What does it say? The aging cryptozoologist has been out in the reeds for too long, and his wife Lena is very worried. Maybe you can find him when you happen to be on the coast? You told Lena Morel... What? You told Lena Morel is missing... Oh, you told Lena Morel is missing because of the broken water lock. She is still worried he hasn't come back. Let Morel know if you see him. Okay. Let Morel know if you see him? I guess we should? Oh, let Morel know. Okay, fuck, I'm dumb as shit. She is still worried he hasn't come back. Let Morel know if you see him. Okay. <laughs> fuck! Whew. Jesus. Maybe I need to do some fucking drugs too. Alright. What's over here? The tomatoes are so thinly sliced. You can see through them. What's up, dude? He has nothing new to say. I don't need anything else. Stay masculine. Can I fuck with this door more? Nope. All right. Fair enough. Oh, holy shit. You know what? I suppose... Oh, look. Is the sleeping man here? No, he's not. I bet he's up there in that area. But I think we should follow... Kim's advice and not go in there immediately. I think what we should do is go outside, fuck with that body, and then see what the hell happens In after we get done with that, and then come in here, right? Or, we could fuck with the body and then try and ram down the door again in Plaisance's place, right? Yeah. We'll do that and then come back here, right? That seems like a plan. And who knows, maybe there'll be more litter out there? And we can use that litter to pay for our bullshit? Don't we still have some litter on us as well? Some tear? Tar? Let's see. 14 bottles, yeah. So we have 1.4 real, if they're 10 cents each. Okay, so we're about halfway there. Good. Alright, until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>